This is problem 9 from section 7.6 in Hungerford. And in this problem, we're given a subgroup N of a group G, which has a property almost like being a normal subgroup. Namely, we know that for any A and G, if we look at the right coset NA, then it's going to equal a left coset. Only we don't know for sure that it's, well, AN. That's just what we would want for it to be a normal subgroup. So what this is saying is that if you look at all the left and right subgroups, they're the same sets, but maybe they get jumbled up a little bit. Right? What we want to prove is that, no, they can't get jumbled up. As soon as you know that all the, the left cosets are the same as all the right cosets, then you know they actually have to match up in the sense that NA will not just equal BN, but will equal AN. All right, so how are we going to prove this? Well, a lot of people probably try to do some algebraic manipulations, mess around a little bit, get stuck pretty quickly. Uh, what I'm going to suggest is that we just think about what cosets are meant to do. They're meant to partition up our group. So we know that every element in the group is going to be in one of the cosets and only one of the cosets. In particular, we know the following. If we start with some element A, so that we know that we have some coset NA and there's some element B such that NA equals BN, we know there's another coset out there, which is AN, and what is the relationship between these two? Well, since we know cosets partition the group, then we know that either AN equals BN, in which case we're really, really happy, or AN and BN are disjoint. Two cosets are either the same or completely disjoint. They can't share any element in common. Which means, if I want to show that AN is equal to BN, it's enough to show that they're not disjoint. Namely, all I need to do is show that one element is in both of these sets. Okay, so what's an element that I can start with here? Well, usually we like to start with the identity element. But, well, unless A is actually in N, we're not going to have the identity element in NA. On the other hand, we will have the identity times A, right? which is, well, just A. So we know for sure that A is an element of AN. On the other hand, A is also an element of NA, which is equal to BN. And voila! We've just found an element, A, which is in BN, and which is in AN. Right? A is equal to E times A up here. It's equal to A times E down here. But since NA is equal to BN, A is also in BN, so AN intersect BN is not empty, and so they must in fact be equal. So we can replace BN by AN. And since NA is equal to AN, now for all A and G, our subgroup N.